What's up guys? Today I have the 2021 Audi A4 right here with me. This is the technology version and it's covered in Nevada blue. Let's take a look at this thing from the front. It's grown up, it's so damn matured looking and it's got quite a swagger about it as well, doesn't it? If you take a look at these headlamps out here, nice little DRLs on top that totally remind you that yeah, this thing belongs to the future. They even have by LED headlamps inside. And down here, when we drop here, you've got a little bit of another sculpted design a little bit of a dual tone finish and that was actually supposed to be a radar but I think it's just a dummy that fits in there. Out there I have another air curtain that is open in the back end facilitating some aerodynamics on your Audi. Step right in the center and that is the star of the front, this hexagonal Audi grill. Take a look at it, we've got some nice horizontal slats and chrome running across it. And yeah, giving the vehicle some good and much needed airflow. As for the hood, I have a couple of lines on this side dropping right down into the grill. And a couple on that side as well. We've got a really strong looking shoulder line that breaks off right here where the front door starts at the driver's point and then it begins with an indented design again at the back end right out here. And also I got to point out these door handles are really funky. You notice when you open them they're actually opening upwards and that's pretty much unlike anything I've seen in the past. So we move it into the back and yes what's holding these two tail lamps together is so damn stylish it's a single chrome strip that runs across the board joining into these all led brake lamps right out here and you notice these are fully led brake lamps with dynamic tone indicators that run right across this way that's a trademark Audi thing, isn't it? It also makes its way slicing across onto the boot. Now with the key in my pocket and imagine my hands being totally full and I can't actually access the boot with my hands, all I do is just simply swipe my leg underneath there. The boot pops itself open with those sensors underneath, a little bit of netted storage on either side. When you open this right down here, you notice we have a space saver spare wheel right in there as well, a bit of a jack and all that stuff. The boot looks decently spaced out and the front seats are foldable in the 40-20-40 split. But when you want to shut it though, you've got to use your hands to slam it down. We've got some trapezoidal exhaust tips out here that are actually real. Now the enclosure is massive, but the pipes in there are present, a little bit tinier. Underneath the hood, a 2-litre TFSI petrol engine that makes 190 horsepower, 320 newton meters of torque. And yes, it's very well encapsulated. Looks kind of cubby and cute as well. Insulation bits on the top to make it even more quieter. No doubt this is a petrol shot as it is going to be quiet. We've got some really neat butch looking tires out here. Five arm spoke design in the alloys. The 17 inch hose. And I'm pretty sure this is going to give us some good ride comfort while we get in and drive off. So I'm getting into the A4's back seat. And yes, my under thigh support is spot on. Okapi brown interiors are what these are. Headroom's really good and so is legroom. The front seat set in my position. I'm 5'10 and it's all comfortable. Nice little armrest out here as well, providing me that support. And my favorite thing in the back seat, of course, are sun blinds, aren't they? And this right here is exactly what it is. Really comfortable. And the sound system as well, making its way back down out here. It's an eight speaker Audi sound system. Sounds pretty decent. So the door panel as well, it's got good support. However, the plastics down here where the bottle holder goes in, are a little on the harder side. And I wouldn't see more than a 500 ml bottle fitting in there. Now when you move in here at the rear end, the transmission tunnel also looks pretty chunky. So fitting three at the back for a short distance would probably be good enough. But when you think about it for a long distance, it would be quite a squeeze considering the size of that transmission tunnel. Above out here, I have my third zone of climatic control in this car. A couple of vents, graced up in chrome, and just simply set up the temperature out there, as well as direct the airflow if you want it on and off. Down there, I have a 12 volt charging socket. So we have a couple of cup holders here. They look really fancy. They're not like one of those regular ones in other cars. So you just simply scoop it out that way, rubberized finish at the bottom. I don't think so a really big cup would fit in there though. Maybe a tiny little bottle. Shut that out of the way and then if I'm gonna open this, I have a little bit more storage out there. And then as for the boot, we cannot access it from here. There's another bummer. Look at the sunshade down along this portion as well. It's soft to touch. A little bit of a tweeter out there, luminized door handle and a nice piano black finish. Grazing out there. Even this is soft. So overall, the rear seat comfort, yep, it's decent. And the visibility is neat as well. You can take a look from pretty much every side from this backseat position that I'm in. Push start button right deep down there, click it and we're on here. 
in the Audi A4 technology version. Another thigh support as well on the front seats out here is really good. They're all powered as well as they have lumbar support and memory function along the door panel out here. Nice little bridge up there. Driver's display is really teched up. It's a 12 inch screen. I have another 10 inch screen out here in the center of the MMI and it acts as a touch screen as well. Has some decent feedback to it. Let's quickly get out of here, click home. And weirdly enough, we don't have any click wheel down here to control the screen. It's totally gone touch based, as you can see. The only wheel now down is your volume control. As for my gearbox, 7 speed, S Tronic. Really chunky, gives you a good grip all the way around. You can actually select your different drive modes out here. I wish these buttons were better, but you can select your drive modes using them too. And so we, as of now, are going to be beginning off in efficiency, which is totally all about mileage, isn't it? And that's what we're going to experience right away. More on a drive, and it even shows me out here on the driver's class so that I am going to be driving efficiently right now. So my gear shifting as well in the 7-speed Astronic gearbox out here is going to be pretty seamless. You're going to experience that right away. But wait a minute, it's actually holding revs even in this mode and up to 3000 RPM, which is kind of funny. But yeah, there's good response. But I guess the car is somehow going to be working it out more economically because that's what the aim of it is. I have a couple of paddle shifters out here. The steering wheel is so damn sporty laid out. Nice little spongy pad out here for the horn in the middle. The Audi logo covering it up. On this side, I have my meter control options. I've got my telephony as well as the voice command activation on this side. And up here, I have my cruise control options on the left hand side. And we have 30 different ambient color options out here that go by the name background lighting. And you can immediately just be select from Maritime to Caribbean or then you have solar or impulse and it even shows as a preview right here so you can figure out whatever your mood is and you can set it up decorates this cabin nicely as for the drive and the whole cubby feeling that i'm getting by holding the steering wheel i just want to leave it that's the one thing that i could just simply tell you quickly move it into comfort and get real about the driving all right so we have bluetooth telephony android auto apple carplay that works without a doubt it's all present the tablet, however, it looks like though it's as if it's been stuck on. I also have a wireless charging pad and this armrest out here. And it even serves up as a storage. It's really neat. So if I click view up out here, I can actually flip through these different view angles. I can get a widescreen map view, my music information, nice details about the car, increase the size of the speed dials, through different views and I'm, I'm really i'm here to see other cars do this and give us this much of freedom i think only mercedes does compete with it the steering wheel as well is manually adjustable for reach as well as rake over up and down now the air vents out here they're stretching all the way in this continuous design all the way to the passenger side as well as zero at this point but temperature control this is so damn fancy when you move it this way you can actually see the temperature increasing or decreasing in the dial itself really fancy and neat Three zone climatic control, throws out some good air. You can actually set the red temperature as well from here. If you're being chauffeured around, your driver could do that for you. As for the glove region, we drop this down, but decent amount of space in there. Overall, it's good. As for the sunroof, yeah, when you move it back this way, the shade does come back along with it. And it's got decent amount of opening. Drop it back down, but the shade wouldn't make its way back because you've got to pull that back manually. Now, overall visibility while I'm driving around, it's absolutely to the top point it's a class i've really got no obstruction even along my a pillar out here as you can see there's no little cutout or anything i can see right through my rear view mirror on that side now as lovely the steering looks feedback from it is minimal so there's also an auto driving mode and that would actually determine the way you drive and the drive mode actually customizes upon the way you throttle the car so we quickly move it into auto and you notice right now it even shows up right there in driver's cluster and yeah, the bump handling is neat. You really notice that it's gliding over everything and that's pretty much down to the fact that this car is stuck with 17 inch wheels, making the ride really comfortable at the front and the back. Ground clearance is good to tackle some of the highest speed breakers. The suspension is pretty agile. It's reading things and it doesn't make you feel uneasy at all. And now what does dynamic do? Yeah, that's the mode we're talking about because that is Audi sport mode which is now halted by people crossing the road. And we are good to go. Here 
grab this thing it holds it all the way to the red line and the braking as well is on point ladies and gents you need a car that brakes well when you can floor it that hard as well this car is good because even if you throw it into the corners and despite the fact that it is a front wheel drive it knows what it's doing and it inspires confidence it doesn't make you feel like okay you're going to wobble off somewhere even while you're throttling it down that way it grips the road and it's good so that was our a4 drive it was totally on point brilliant Audi has done a fantastic job with this car right out here. They've nailed it in terms of the comfort. So whether you're driving it or sitting in the back of it, you'd have a complete smile on your face. The technology systems in build right there are also brilliant. The entire layout of Sodam Futuristic exterior interior, it's top notch. The only drawback though might be that front wheel, front wheel drive system, but yeah, you don't really feel much of that either. With all those drive modes in there, you could set yourself to have some good fun with this A4 right here. I'm Raspreet Gill and if you do like the video, do drop a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to the channel so you know whenever I post the next one.